What's the quickest way to get traffic to your website? It's by leveraging it from other websites. So today I'm going to help you to create a system that will drive traffic and it works for affiliate marketing, blogging, email marketing, and this method can also work for e-commerce websites too. Welcome to ProfitCopilot.com. My name is Mick Meany and I teach digital marketing strategies so you can have a fulfilling business that provides you and your family with the lifestyle and the peace of mind that you deserve. Okay, so last night while I was planning this tutorial, I had a brainwave. You see, I, I realized something. I thought, what if I could provide my subscribers with the exact niche specific, highly targeted traffic sources that they need specifically for their individual niches? So I emailed my subscribers and I asked them to tell me which niches they need traffic for. And the response has just been amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Now I'm going to share those traffic sources later on in this tutorial and they span a wide range of niches. But listen, there's no point in having a bunch of traffic sources unless you know what to do with them, right? So I'm going to share one of the most powerful traffic methods that has stood the test of time, guest blogging. Now, guest blogging is a lot easier than you think. It's actually matured over the years and it's turned into a simple system that can get predictable and reliable results. So that means you can actually outsource this or hand it over to a VA. So let me give you some examples from one of my friends who is crushing it with guest blogging. His name is Ryan Bidoff. He's an author of several blogging books. And let's take a look at what he is doing so you might be able to emulate some of his success. This is Ryan's blog. It's bloggingfromparadise.com and he's a travel blogger. So what we're going to do is take a look at, at his approach to guest blogging. So now apart from guest blogging itself, I want you to pay attention to what Ryan is doing, especially on Twitter. Because if we have a look at his most recent status updates, you'll see that he's actually linking out to other people's content. So these are not his guest blog posts. They're not even links on his website, although he, he does include those in the mix as well. But if we have a look at this, he's linking to a piece of content that somebody else has created. He's promoting it for them. And if we look through his strategy, we can see that he's doing this on a very regular basis. And this is very smart. Ryan is sending traffic to these websites. So I believe there are a few reasons behind this. And I suspect the core reason behind this approach is because Ryan believes that the content he is sharing from other websites is going to be beneficial to his audience. Secondly, I believe, and I could be wrong, Ryan, if you're watching, buddy, let me know about this. I believe that sharing other people's content and also tagging them in the share creates an opportunity for dialogue. It starts a conversation. It allows Ryan to increase his network. So the core theme here is Ryan is helping his audience and he's helping the people he wants to network with. So let's take a look at some of the guest blogs that Ryan has published. So this one, three common blogger limiting beliefs to let go for good. So if we look at how Ryan has structured his blog posts, we'll see a few key elements. So first of all, he starts with storytelling. This pulls the reader in. It's a very powerful, effective strategy that I'm sure you are already aware of. Secondly, look at the link that he has right here. This isn't to a piece of his uh, web properties. If we click it, we should see that there, there we go. It's on the same website. It's a fairly recently updated piece of content on the same domain name. So he's creating an internal link. Look at the uh, look at the anchor text he's using. This is for SEO benefits. Intentionally or not, well, it's going to benefit uh, search engine. It's going to benefit their SEO. 
next, he leads into actionable tips. So the, these are straightforward strategies that people can implement quickly and see results from. And then it's only when we get down to the bio, we see that Ryan is linking out to his website. So he's, he's also linking to his blog and he's also linking to a specific page on his blog where people can buy his ebook. Let's take a look at another piece of content published by Ryan on someone else's website. So we can see some consistency here because it seems that Ryan has a, a very effective system in place for creating guest blogs here. Here we go. He starts again with storytelling, pulls the reader in, and then not only does he provide actionable tips that you can implement straight away, he's also linking to internal pieces of content on this website. In addition to that, he's also linking to other domains. Now, this is a very smart strategy. First of all, I genuinely believe that Ryan believes that this piece of content that he's linking to on Backlinko is going to be of, of uh, immense value to the people reading this piece of content, but, but it also does something else. If enough people click on this link and visit that Backlinko article, what's going to happen is the author of this piece of content, Brian Dean, well, He's going, to, he's, he's going to become aware that Ryan has linked to him on this article. So in time, it may well help put Ryan on Brian Dean's radar. And then again, when we get down to the bio, it's only then will Ryan link to his own website. Now, this is the list of niches that my email list has provided. If you don't see your niche on here, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to find specific traffic sources for your individual niche, even if yours isn't mentioned here. Now, you'll notice that some of these are very, very specific. For example, Disney, Marvel, area rugs. What I would be tempted to do here is change this into maybe home decor. Or perhaps if we have a look at Disney Marvel, we go entertainment or or comic books or sci-fi, but something a little bit broader where there's going to be more traffic sources. Because, for example, if we look at area rugs, well, most of the traffic is going to be flying to home decor websites. So it makes sense to get established on there and use them to leverage the traffic. Now, well, there, there are a whole heap of niches suggested to me. What I've done is, is try to combine, what I've done is try to compile them together to create these big industries. So I've left, I've left this on, for example, area rugs, but let's get rid of that and look at home decor. Same again with Disney, Marvel, let's get rid of that. So we could even expand this out wider into just home or home living, family type uh, websites. So what's, what that's going to do is give you even more opportunity, more traffic. So let's go through the list and, and then at the end, I'll show you how to find even more traffic sources. So you can build upon this list or you can find niches that are not represented here. So let's start with a good all rounder that practically anybody can use. This is wiki web post and they publish guest blogs and information on a wide range of niches, everything from lifestyle. And then you can actually drill down into lifestyle if you want to get down to a more niche level, for example, real estate or home decor. They also publish content on technology, business, automobile, and a bunch of other topics. So, okay, to get published on here, click the help us tab go to request a new article. Let's get rid of that annoying pop up. And here we have a, a list of guest post guidelines. So take the time to go through that. 
make sure that you agree with that, that you can follow those rules. And this is what you get for guest posting two links, but the content must be informative. You need at least two to three high quality images and you can add videos, which is fantastic. If you're happy with, with all that, then drop them an email, wikiwebposts at gmail.com. Okay, next up, if you're in marketing related niches, if you're doing things like affiliate marketing, digital marketing, if you're covering social media topics, then get response might be a welcome home for you. So this is what they're looking for. Take the time to read this. Make sure that you, you abide by all of this. Don't stray too far from what they're actually looking for. And then click submit your topic idea. Do complete every form that it, it asks you to. And obviously with a company like GetResponse, you do need to put your best foot forward. Another popular niche is Forex. I've received lots of uh, requests for a Forex traffic source. So bluefx.co.uk, they accept guest blogs. So to find the, uh, the contact information, scroll right down to the bottom of the page, go to support, then scroll down to contact us and you can drop them a line on their website. That's an automated bot. It's not much help, but you can drop them an email. So info at bluefx.co.uk and I have it on good authority that they do accept uh, blog posts, guest, guest blog posts, excuse me. However, if for whatever reason they've decided to stop accepting guest blog posts, then I've got another one for you. So this is X, uh, sorry, fxtradingrevolution.com, fxtradingrevolution.com. And to guest post on this site, you have to scroll right down to the very bottom nav, click on guest blogging, and there it will tell you all their, all their terms and what to expect. Next up for people in weight loss, fitness, those kind of related niches, we've got pickthebrain.com. These guys accept uh, lots of guest blogs. So how do you get published? Well, let's go to the about page. I think it is. And if we scroll down to underneath the team, we have this section here where it will link you to a guest blogging page. So if we click that, it will tell you the requirements, what they expect of you and the topics that they cover. While heavy focus is on health and fitness and weight loss, they also cover a fairly wide range of topics. So you can probably sneak some content in if you're involved with perhaps blogging or marketing, entrepreneurship, art science, if you're able to motivate people or if you can help people with things like meditation. So there's a fairly decent range of topics here, but by just taking a look at the front page, you'll see that there is a lot of content about health and fitness and nutrition. Next up is female interest niche is so this website onlywomenstuff.com covers a fairly decent range of female related topics. So I thought I'd include this as well. Now it gets around 250,000 monthly visitors. So they claim, which is a pretty good start in my opinion. So if you want to get featured on here, take the time to explore their guest blogging guidelines, make sure that you abide by, you know, exactly what they want. And then you can email them and hopefully get featured on their website too. Okay, moving on to entertainment related niches. So I noticed that people are, are really interested in Disney and Marvel and movies. So this one, boxofficebuzz.com, buzz with just one Z. This accepts guest posts. So how do we get published here? Let's scroll right down to the very bottom. Go to, I think it's the about us section. If we click about us, go down to our writers. If we go down further to the, to the uh, quick link section, 
here it says I also want to start writing so if, if you're interested in reviewing for them you can become a critic now and then complete that form and hopefully you'll get published okay people are also interested in publishing on Christian uh, websites so this is redeeminggod.com if you go to the about section scroll right down keep going keep going keep going eventually you're going to hit this form so fill that in and give it your best shot right golfing is another uh, popular niche so this website is called golfreviewsguide.com if we scroll right down to the very bottom nav we have this footer section where we can get to oops where's it gone uh, right for us let's click on that now it's going to tell you their terms and what to expect and there you can apply to write for them so that's golfreviewsguide.com one very popular niche out there is dogs and dog training dog related products so i have got dogsnaturallymagazine.com they accept guest posts if we scroll down to the footer we can get to this section right for dogs naturally click on that it will tell you the whole shebang of what they want what they expect and then you just fill in the form do take the time to fill in each one of these uh, fields for best results and they will also pay you for the article as well okay next up is gardening another very popular niche amongst you guys so I have got primroseblog.co.uk now to get to their guest posting guest line uh, guest posting guidelines excuse me click on the contact tab scroll down the page to guest blogging guidelines and there it will tell you exactly what you need to do to get featured on this website Reiki websites seem to be in demand at the moment so I've got the Reiki Healing Association Com. so this website will allow you to submit an article if we scroll right down to the very bottom we have submit article these guys will tell you exactly what you need to do to get published on this website it seems that there's a few of you interested in the puzzle niche so this website is funwithpuzzles.com if you go to the contact me section go down to write a guest post there you're going to get all the details you need plus the email address to send your content to beauty seems to be of, of a decent level of interest amongst you guys whoops drop my pen so we have got makeupandbeautyblog.com head over to the contact section get in touch with this lady and she might well feature your content next up is webdesignledger.com for people interested in web design related topics so head over to the contact section go to write for us write for us excuse me and they will tell you exactly what you need to do and then we have anxiety and mental health related niches as well so this is anxietyuk.org.uk so we have this get involved section click on that go down to blogs and it will tell you exactly what you need to do to get featured on here so if we click through to that they've got a full PDF document of what they expect from you so that's anxietyuk.org.uk now what if your niche wasn't represented or you just want to find even more traffic sources for your niche well we're going to use a few boolean search phrases here so they all follow a similar pattern so we have your keyword here and then we have a keyword modifier such as guest post we can also add a plus into the mix as Google is suggesting there but what I recommend you do is try it with and without also I'm going to give you some more search terms that you can use in a second so let's change this keyword for a specific niche let's go with one that wasn't represented on the list so I'm going to go with guitar because I know that there are a few guitar players on my email list so let's go with guitar and now we have a list of websites that accept guitar posts now we can change this modifier to something like write for us and now we're, we're going to get even more 
suggestions. Again, if we change it to say suggest the post. Let me show you some more modifiers. So we've got, let's say, guest article. I can't spell today. What's new, right? So now we have a slightly different set of results because they're bringing out exact websites that have previously featured guest bloggers. What I want you to do at this point is pay attention to the dates because let's say we have one here from 2017. They might not be accepting guest, uh, guest posts anymore. So what I would encourage you to do is approach the ones that that have the most recent published date first and then work backwards from there. Let me show you a couple more modifiers. I think these modifiers are very powerful. So we have become an author. We've also got, if I can remember, I'm drawing a blank, hang on, it's contribute, contribute, contribute to our site. So there in the space of a couple of minutes or so, we've managed to generate literally hundreds of websites that accept blog posts for this niche. And we can niche down as well. So we can go, let's say acoustic guitar. Let me correct the spelling on that. And if you want to expand out on this idea, what we can do is find topic clusters. So head over to a website such as lsigraph.com, put in your keyword. And what it's going to do is bring back a whole heap of relevant topics. So we have the approximate search volume for each of these key phrases. So for example, acoustic guitar Fender gets 18,000 searches a month. So this can come into play later on in this strategy during the research phase. So once you've got some ideas and you have a list of, uh, of potential guest blogging websites, it's time to start validating them. So let's say I'm going to go with guest post for this example. Let's choose the key, the key phrase guitar guest post. So let's go with the very first result guest post for the guitar answer guy dot com. Let's take a look at this website. So this could be a potential website. What we're going to do is grab the domain name guitaranswerguy.com. We're going to go to similar web and we're going to search and see what we can get. So hopefully there will be a level of traffic from similar web. Even if it's, even if there's nothing there, it doesn't mean we should discount it. We just know that it's not one of the, the big names in the niche. And what have we got? Okay. So there's, there's a fair bit of data here. So we can see that there is, you know, a pretty decent level of traffic coming to the website. So we might want to tap into some of that. But if we have a look at the traffic by country, we can see that most of that traffic, 41% is dominated by the United States. And the rest is made up of the UK, Germany, Canada, and Finland. That's really awesome traffic. So if you were going for a particular demographic, this information will be very valuable to you. Also, we need to have a look at the traffic sources so we know how they're marketing themselves. Here we can see that search engines are driving a lot of the traffic to the site, which is really good for you. So it will have some pretty big SEO benefits. So we also need to check how much of that is organic. In this case, 100% is organic. Fantastic. But we also want to say, excuse me, we also want to see some social media action as well. So here we're getting 2%, almost 3% of the traffic from social media. So we, we know that there is some kind of promotion going on behind the scenes. Next up, we want to validate that it's not spammy. The, the, this is not part of a bad neighborhood. So if we get links from there, it's going to be beneficial. So for this, we can use the free Moz link 
Explorer tool. So go to the free SEO tools on Moz, go to Link Explorer, and then we can paste in the URL of the website we're investigating and we can analyze it or we can go straight to spam score and then enter it in. So click analyze, it's going to bring back some data. It'll show us their interpretation of domain authority. Spam score is 9%. And okay, you might be alarmed to see that almost 10% is, uh, is, is the spam score. In fact, this is a very low spam score. Typically, anything under around 30 is pretty decent. Then between 31 and 60 tends to be kind of medium. You want to, it's okay, but thread lightly. And then beyond 60 is kind of get out of town. Don't use that website. Get, you know, don't have links from there. Now, while we're in Moz, we may as well check the, uh, the top pages just to see the quality of the content that is being indexed in search engines. So what we need to do now is go ahead. Oops, that's an image. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. So we need to find actual content. So let's click on that. And we need to, we need to make up our own mind about the quality of this content. So if it's indexed in Google, chances are it's going to be pretty good. But you know what Google's like. It doesn't always get things right. So we have to just validate that they are producing high quality content and we are happy to be a part of this website. In addition to this, we also need to check the number of social shares. Now we have previously checked that there is some social media activity, but social shares will become one of the key metrics that we will track later on. So we can see very clearly here, here, excuse me, that this piece of content is ranking good in Google and it's get, getting a fairly decent level of social media shares. Now, while we're back in Moz, let's take a look at the anchor text so we can see what type of, of uh, key phrases other websites like to use uh, when they're uh, linking to the content. So this tells us, well, it really, it gives us ideas of what type of content might perform well on this website. And this also allows us to check the quality of their backlinks. We've already checked it for spam. We know that it's going to be pretty good, but here's another way to use this information. We know that they are linking to this type of content, right? So all these websites here are driving traffic to this domain name. Now we can publish similar content knowing that if they're, if they're linking to this content on this guy's website, then chances are they might link to similar content on our own websites. So we can, we can bring that into our overall marketing strategy. Another metric we really should pay attention to is the level of engagement on the website. So if they have comments enabled and some might not, and that's perfectly fine, but if they do, you need to go down and look at the level of, of engagement down here. Not only do we want to see a decent number of comments, we all, we also want to look at the, um, the level of meaningful comments, because what we don't want to see, are these uh, are like hit and run comments, you know, like, uh, this is a hit and run. So great tips. Thank you for posting this. So it, while it is a level of engagement, it doesn't really contribute to the, to the discussion. It doesn't further things. So what you really want to make sure is happening is that there are, you know, some decent weighty comments here that provide real value, real discussion much in a similar vein, you want to check their social media presence because if they are publishing frequently on social media, then you, you kind of know that they are going to promote the content that you publish. And that's what you want. You want them to do a level of the marketing as well. Of course, you can do some yourself, which we'll speak about later on. So take note of the type of content 
that they're sharing on social media. Also, we can go back to Moz and really get an idea of, uh, of uh, the keywords that they are ranking for. So if we go to keyword research and we can go to ranking keywords, it's going to bring back some pretty interesting data. So it's going to take a couple of seconds to, to retrieve that information for us. So now we know that they are targeting these keywords. And this will help you generate ideas because what we're really doing here is finding out what works. So the website themselves are going to be fully aware of all these keywords and their position for these keywords. But what I want you to do is think about the gaps, the keyword gaps. So what, what type of content are they not ranking for that they should be ranking for? And this is where we can go back to the LSI graph and have a look at the, the topic uh, clusters. And to get even more ideas, if we go to alexa.com and we type in the website address, it's going to bring back some interesting information here. So we have the, these keyword opportunities break down. So it's going to give us plenty of suggestions. If we click on keyword gaps, there we go. So now we know that if we target these keywords, it can be beneficial to that website. So as you're going through this process, as you're generating lots of keyword ideas here and through Moz, and even through just searching the website itself, having looked through the topics, what I want you to do is think about who does, who does this content benefit? Have a real clear picture in your mind of who is going to consume the content, who is going to get the mo the maximum level of, of results or information from that. You need a really clear idea of who you're writing to. So think about who would want to read it. You know, if your article only benefits you, if it only has links and branding, ask yourself, well, why would anyone want to publish it? So you have to think about the end user, the, the, the person reading this content. And then think about what type of information you can provide that might be unique or different to what Google has already indexed. So what's your unique angle on things? And this is where keyword research will really come into its own. So you can make sure that it's not oversaturated, that there's not, it's not going to be too competitive for uh, the website you're considering uh, pitching ideas to. Which brings us neatly to the topic of pitching your guest blog posts. So let's go through this section and then I'll show you the key metrics you need to cover and also how to structure your guest blog posts too for maximum results. Okay, so pitching your blog post idea. This is how to do it. So we start with building relationships. You've heard this so many times before, but what does it really mean? How does it really look in the real world? Well, we start with existing relationships or we can try and forge new ones. So if you have existing contacts, reach out to them. Ask them if they know of any opportunities. And that was actually my first step into guest posting. I reached out to uh, one of my friends, Anne Smarty, about, about publishing on an SEO website. She knew uh, one of the big names, and I can't remember which one it was. It's such a long time ago, but they were looking for guest bloggers. She recommended that uh, I get in touch. She put in a good word for me, and then they accepted my contributions. Now to forge new relationships. OK, that's going to be a bit trickier, but you can do it. It's just going to take some time. You have to put in the work and that is to connect on social media. That's probably the easiest way to do it. So tag them in relevant posts, thank them, just get on their radar, share their content, tag them when you do ask questions, asking questions is a very powerful way to get somebody's attention because it plays into to their ego, but in a really cool ethical way. 
because you are asking for their opinion or asking for them for their help. So what does that communicate? It communicates that you see them as advanced in their area, that they have knowledge worth sharing. And it communicates that you see them as influential. So that's going to make them feel good. We can also uncover uh, new data and insights. I'll talk about how you actually do this later on. But if you can bring someone fresh information that has not been discovered before and it is highly relevant to their audience, to their target market, guess what? You will have their attention. So that can open the door to a conversation. And listen, if you need to pick up the phone when it comes to pitching, absolutely do it. I've done that in the past and I have seen pretty good success from picking up the phone, <laughs> surprising someone, you know, and and being absolutely genuinely upfront with people to say, look, I found your number. I have this idea. I know that you're busy. I just want to cut through all the noise. Can you give me five minutes to to hear my idea? And sure, it is a cold call, but cold calling does work when it's done right. So what I recommend you do is, first of all, ask them if they have the time to talk to you. That's number one. Then educate them about a new development. See, in sales, educating people is a really good way to establish yourself as a credible person. And you're giving them a piece of knowledge that they weren't aware of. So, so use sales techniques uh, to, to get that door open. And then you do have to prove yourself. So you can do that by providing a piece of unique data or some research that hasn't been discovered yet. But you will absolutely need to have content published on your own website first or on an alternative website so, such as Medium. You need to have content out there already to be taken seriously. This is going to give you credibility. You really need a handful of authoritative pieces of content. And I absolutely mean authoritative. So we're not looking for zombie content. We're not looking for run of the mill content. What we're looking for is something that really establishes you as someone who is in the know. Then you need to communicate that you have done your research. So to do this, we we can comment and reflect back that we know what they like publishing. So they can clearly see that we, we understand them, we understand their website, we understand their audience. And we can show them the gaps, the keyword gaps, the content gaps that we have found previously. And again, if, if we present new research, we will get on their radar. You know, you can use these, these blog posting opportunities as a springboard. So you can get featured on one and because one has given you the time of day and given you a platform to speak, other similar websites will be more inclined to give you a break. Getting on the, the, the first few is really going to be the most difficult thing. Also have more than one idea ready. So we don't just pitch a single idea unless we're using that new newly discovered research. So give a concise summary of each article idea. And we let them make the choice. So we present maybe three or five options, each one with a concise summary explaining what you intend to do with it, and then let them make up their own mind about which one they would rather go with. Now, that doesn't mean you have to write all three or all, all five articles. You only write it when you know that they, they're on board to publish it. And when you're doing your outreach program, the subject line you use is going to be everything. This is really vital because if they don't like the subject line, they're going to ignore you. You're just going to get lost in all the noise. So to combat that, mention their name in the actual subject line. Get really personal. Make sure that they understand that you know who they are and you have a specific reason for contacting them. Make sure that you include curiosity in the subject line. That's going to help them to, to feel motivated to click and read 
your pitch. And then if you don't hear anything back, follow up a week or two later and understand that this is a natural process. You know, people won't always respond right, uh, right away. You know, some might not respond at all, and that's okay. Because we really don't need many people to get on board with this. So give them the space and the time to, to go through their emails, to consider it, and then follow up. I know from my own experience on the other side of things, I get pitched blog posts, guest blog posts, multiple times every day. And most of them are just ignored. However, when someone follows up with me, I'll recognize the name. And think, oh, yeah, I, I kind of remember reading that. And then, and then they can start a conversation. Basically, when you do this, when you, you talk to them about their guest blog uh, their, their website and you publishing excuse me I'm losing train of my thought when you're communicating about publishing on their site you want to make sure that the emphasis is, is always on them their audience and what benefits those people instead of what is in it for you so don't lead with uh, how many links you can have whether they do follow all that stuff don't ask any of that just think about the value you can provide to the people consuming this piece of content okay next it comes to actually creating the content so before you do anything you need to define your goal so what's the whole point of creating this content do you want to use it for lead gen do you want to get affiliate sales do you want to get social shares it's completely up to you but you have to get clear on what you want to achieve from publishing this piece of content. When it comes to actually writing the content, just like we've seen Ryan do do things, use a mix of storytelling and actionable content. So talk about yourself, tell stories from your past, it, use your experience, tap into that, or use your, your customers, use real world, real life examples that you can weave in to your piece of content and then mix it with actionable content, real steps that will move someone forward. And think about the problems that, that they have and how you can help them to solve those. Then make the link in your bio the next logical step. So here you have to map out the customer journey. So for example, if you're teaching people how to build a website, the first thing you might want to teach them is how to choose a domain name. And then the next step is to get web hosting. So, so you structure that in to the article plus, plus the goal that you want to achieve. So make sure that your goal is the next logical step for them to take. And then link to a landing page or a bridge page. If you're doing affiliate marketing, then you absolutely need either a landing page or a bridge page. Now, the great thing with most autoresponders, email service providers, is that they will give you a free landing page. This is one of my friend's landing pages. This is a free Aweber form. It's just on a web page and they are sending traffic to this. And even simple pages like that can convert really well. Now, if you want to if you want to generate affiliate sales quickly then you need a bridge page so this is going to be for example a review article it can be on your website it can be somewhere else like medium or wordpress.com or blogger or wherever but the point is there has to be some kind of bridge between your guest blog and the affiliate offer that you're promoting so that bridge for best results is going to be a landing page and an email list. So you capture the lead and that means you can sell to them over and over as many times as you like. Or at a very minimum, that bridge page will act as uh, a buffer between whatever it is you're promoting and the guest blog. Because most guest blogging websites will not allow you to link directly to affiliate links. It is a little bit spammy, so that's why you need that bridge page. Or 
you can just link to another piece of content on your own website and drive traffic that way. Another tactic, and we have seen Ryan do this, is to mention bigger names in your blog post. So think about the, the key figures out there, people who have, have a sizable audience that you might want to connect with. So mention them. Use the traffic available on the guest blogging websites to get their attention. So now you've published your piece of content, let's track your results so you know what is working. This is vital. So you need to track your traffic. That sounds obvious, but the way to do it is to use Google Analytics or similar. So head into there, make sure that you are getting traffic from uh, the traffic source. If it's providing a good level of traffic, then rinse and repeat. Ask them if you can go back and publish more and keep that in your rotation. If you're not getting much traffic, then either you, you've misfired, so there's a disconnect between the topic or the content, something's going wrong, or there just isn't an adequate amount of traffic on, uh, on the platform. I've heard people who've sometimes tried guest blogging say that they, they didn't get any results. And that is because something went wrong either during the research phase or during the content creation phase. So there's a mismatch. You can verify that and validate that in Google Analytics. So keep an eye on your traffic levels. Also track the number of leads. You can do that through your ESP, so your email service provider, your autoresponder, depending on the one you have. Now, if you're using um, a fairly fancy system like Kartra, then you will be able to monitor and track everything. So you want to keep an eye on what thing, what the page is converting at. Now, should you set up a separate landing page just for guest blogs? You can, but I don't think it's necessary, to be honest. The level of tracking that we have now is, is so advanced, especially if you're using Kartra or similar. You might also want to track your social shares. That's vital. I, in my opinion, if you're going for these big guest blogging websites, then you want to make sure that your social shares are in line with what everyone else is getting. OK, OK, listen, it's going to fluctuate, but you just want to make sure that there is some activity, something's something's happening. So the website is promoting your uh, your piece of content and people are engaging with it. Other people are sharing, sharing it on social media. You just want to make sure that, that is happening as well. Also, check this, the page enga engagement, excuse me, things like comments. Make sure that people are really taking the time to provide insightful, decent comments on your content. Which takes us to the next section, which is ongoing uh, work that you have to do. So you have to reply to comments, remain in the community, you know, actually engage with people, further the discussion, make that go as deep as you can. You know, the webmasters and the people owning the, who own these websites, they're going to take notice of you for doing that. They'll see that you actually care about their community. Such an important step. And then continue, excuse me, continue to communicate with those websites. Further the relationship, continue to build upon that. You know, after a month or so, maybe share your results with them. Say, I'm, I'm blown away by how much traffic I got. Would love to repeat it again. Hopefully your audience really enjoyed my, uh, my content. It got so many social shares. Here you really want to use social proof to demonstrate that their audience liked it. Also, if you're receiving uh, traffic from, from Google, so if the, the article is ranked for a specific keywords, you might want to tell them about that. So make, sh make sure that they realize that you, that you have contributed real value to their business. And oh boy, they will want to work with you again. Also, cross promote your guest posts only when it's relevant, of course, but create almost like a network or a web 
of your guest posts from one site to another. So you want to assist with driving traffic. So you want to send people from one to another and that is going to put you in such such positive light with these webmasters and, and these bloggers because you're helping them to get more traffic. So of course they're going to want to work with you again. But the thing to remember is you have to be consistent because when you are consistent, you can achieve amazing results. Like Matt, he's making millions of dollars online thanks to my training. And if you want to know the secret and you are serious about making money on the internet, then of course you need more web traffic because traffic equals money. So I will give you the secret traffic methods that I never share on YouTube or anywhere else. And you can get them all for free when you click on this thumbnail here. I'll also put a link in the description for you. So while you're here, also take a look at this. This is how to make tons of content really quickly using artificial intelligence tools. Thanks for watching. See you soon.